Have you ever gone outside and just looked up at the sky and thought, man, what a beautiful sky? Or maybe it is that you've sat and looked at the sky as the clouds have rolled in, the dark clouds, the rain clouds have come in, and you think to yourself, what an awesome sky. You know, when we look at Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse number 6, we see that God in the second day of creation, created the sky and the sea. And what a powerful scene it is that in Genesis chapter 1 that we focus our attention to the fact that God indeed created something that was very good. When we look at nature and we look at the sky and we look at trees and we look at different things that are around us, I don't know about you, but for me, I can't help but to look at it and think, what a powerful God that we serve. And today, as we focus on day two of our virtual vacation Bible school in our adult class, we're going to be focused on the fact that God created the sky and the sea. He called the sky heaven. As a matter of fact, in some translations of Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 6 through verse number 8, the translator even uses the word heaven. You know, as I look at the word heaven, the first thought that comes to my mind is the heaven where God dwells, the place where we will one day, when this life is over, that we will one day see God and we will be in his presence. But this today, as we focus on Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6 through 8, I want to read this text. And then after I read this text, I want to make a few comments about it. Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through verse 8. And God said... Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were there, uh, that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God created the expanse, called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. This is the second day of creation that we're going to be focused on today. You know, when I look at the order of creation and I come to the second day and I notice that God here has created the sky and the land and then he creates or the sky and the sea and then he creates the land. But also there's another key passage of scripture that I want to talk about for just a moment in this text that I think is really important. And at the beginning of each one of these days of creation where God said what he had, what he had done throughout this creation process, the first part of this says that the, the Lord or God said. Now, this is really key because God's word or God speaking created the firmament. Not only that, but he created what we would know as the atmosphere or the sky that he talks about, and even that, the sea. Now, I want you to think about for just a moment how awesome it is to look at and to focus on a God that is able to just simply say something and it happens. When we look at the days of creation, we notice that God simply spoke stuff into existence. Now, to me, that looks like, and that is uh, something that is breathtaking. It is something that I, I can't even wrap my mind around to look at the fact and to know that God just simply spoke and it happened. Then God said, let there be ferment in the midst of the waters, verse number six. You see, God's word is powerful. Not only the word uh, that, that, we, that we read or, or that we focus on every day, but his word as a, as a whole, the word that we have in our hands, the word that is before us is so powerful. And God here in creation on day one and day two and day three and so on, all of these things came into existence simply by God speaking his word. Notice once again, as we noticed yesterday in our lesson on Genesis chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse number 3, and dealing with that God created the, uh, or let there be light as he created light. Uh, again, we notice here that God's work that he did in creation was such a powerful work, and something that nobody can even ever try to uh, do again, because God has already done everything that needs to be done. In the first part of Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Again, what more evidence do we need to know that God was the one that was at the center of the creation? He was the one that was there creating all things. 
And so today, as we look at Genesis 1 and verse 6 through verse number 8, I want to draw your attention to the fact that God created the sky and the sea. And he did it by simply speaking this in to motion. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10 through verse 11, God's word, the Bible says, God's word will accomplish what he sent forth for it to do. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 3, man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Psalm 138 and verse number 2, he has magnified his word above his name. First Thessalonians 2 and verse number 13, God's word performs its work in those who believe. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, man is born again through God's word. And so I hope today that we realize and we understand just how powerful God's word is. Let's go back to think about the word firmament. Speaks of something that is spread out. When you think about the sky and, and the sea, you, you see something that is spread out over a large area, a, a very large area. And so it comes from a verb that means to hammer or to spread and overlay. And so what God has done here when he create his firmament, the sky and the sea, he has spread out an overlay to help in, in many different parts of our life. You know, if we wonder about the creation and who created it, and if it was just something that happened or if it was something that God did, uh, we just walk outside and we look and see how the trees and the sky, and, and we see the clouds, and then the clouds go away, and then the clouds come back in, and then darker clouds come in. And you can see that God's word and, and God is all over this creation. But there's also something else that I think is really important for us to understand is that from the very beginning, God had prepared to make sure that creation was exactly perfect, that it was exactly right, that the sky was where it was supposed to be, that the waters were there where they were supposed to be, and that, that they were doing the job that they were supposed to be doing. And so God prepared somewhere, and God made sure that it was exactly the way it was supposed to be. And so God spent time, and, and God prepared a place for us. He prepared a place for us to, uh, to live, and he made things just exactly the way that it should be in order for life to sustain on this earth. The creation of the firmament shows the power and the glory of God. And when we look at the sky and the sea, we see God's power. Being able to go outside and to look around and, and to observe the beauty of, of the heavens. Uh, man's heart should be moved to worship and to praise God because of the great creator that he is. The psalmist writes in Psalm 19 and verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God. Man, again, and the firmament shows his handiwork. You know, when you go outside and you look at the clouds and sometimes when uh, when I'm outside or when uh, my family's outside or something, we will often look up and you can see different maybe shapes that you're looking at in the sky and the clouds. And, and you can see how that that the, the sky is, is the right color and, and the clouds are right. And when we look at those things, it just expresses to us the glory and the power of God. But also, we see God's handiwork all in creation Again, when we look at Psalm 97 and verse number 6, the heavens also declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. When you look at the sky, you see God's glory. You see his handiwork. You see, uh, and everybody is able to look up and to see the sky and to see God's handiwork at, work, at play. Psalm 150 and verse number 1, listen to the praise we are to give God for his creation. Praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. In Acts chapter 14 and verse number 17, listen to what Paul says. He says, Nevertheless, He did not leave Himself without witness, in that He did good. He gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Acts 14 and verse number 7. Where does the rain come from? It comes from the heavens. It comes from the sky. And again, God created that to be that way. In Romans chapter 1, Paul again says this, that since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even his eternal power and Godhead so that there are they are without excuse. God shows us in his creation everything that we need. He shows us how that he works in his handiwork and he shows us how that, that he has created things beautiful and, and for us to observe those things. And when we observe them, we look at them and we give God praise and glory for that. You see, the firmament and, and the sky and the sea and, and the atmosphere that God created is, is for man to sustain life. And, and God knows that, that man must have an atmosphere. He must have the right kind of atmosphere. Everything has to be just right in order for us to breathe, in order for us to live upon this earth. Therefore, when we look at God's creation, we see that God created an atmosphere on, or, or airspace to sustain, to sustain life. You know, we think about that in a physical way that God created all these things and he made it just right and, and so that we could breathe and so life could happen here on earth and so that we would, we would be able to carry on and that it would sustain us. But again, we turn it to the spiritual side of things and we notice as well that the same is very true spiritually. That in scripture, the, the word there that is used for, for breath of life or breath of God, pneuma, means that it is the spirit of God. God knows that man cannot live spiritually without the breath or spirit of God, the very presence of the Holy Spirit. God has made this possible. Physically, man was taken out of the ground and our bodies made up of about 15 to 16 different kinds of chemical elements that, that, are, that are what is in the ground. If we were to be boiled down into the separate uh, chemical uh, in, uh, elements of which our bodies are made, we would be worth very little in terms of money. You see, God created us exactly the way we needed to be created in order to live. And again, when it comes to our spiritual lives, God has given us everything that we need in order for us to survive spiritually. God has given us his word. He has given us the opportunity to go and to study his word so that we can live spiritually. He's given us Jesus, his son, who, who provides the opportunity for us to live with God forever. He gives us the Holy Spirit who is there to help us in our times of weaknesses, to help us to translate our thoughts and our, 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 our thoughts to God in our prayer life. You see, God gives us just like physical, uh, physically to sustain life. He gives us things spiritually as well to sustain life. Again, the Word of God, it's inspired by God. It's God-breathed. It's God-spoken. And the creation is something that is spoken by God into existence. What a powerful God we serve. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 7, God made the firmament. Thus, God made the firmament, and the Bible says, and divided the waters. God, along with Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit, who all three make up the Godhead, the Trinity, were there and, and, and created the heavens and the earth. I want you to notice with me as we look at this and as we notice that God throughout time in Genesis chapter 1 and, and as we work through, God always worked off of a plan. He had a plan for creation. He had a plan for salvation. He had a plan all throughout his word of how we would live and how that we would be able to sustain life. And so God is a person, is someone that is, is, is prepared. Now, when I look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 6 through verse number 8, and I look at the word heaven, I can't help but to think about the fact that God also has prepared a place for us. He has given us the opportunity. He has given us a plan on how that we too can be in heaven with him for all eternity. He has given us an opportunity uh, every day of our life to make sure that we are living a life that, that is according to his word, the word that he spoke, the word that is God-breathed, the word that is inspired by God. He's given us a plan in there in order for us to follow so that we can be in heaven, a prepared place. God, again, has always been a God of preparation, and God has prepared a place for us. In 1 Thessalonians, we find in this text, in verse number 4 of 1 Thessalonians, that God, again, has 
has prepared a place, and he talks about this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I want to begin reading at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 16, and notice what the scripture says. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of of uh, with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so that we will also be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Again, God explains to us that he has made a, a place for us. He has prepared heaven for us, a place where God dwells, a place where we can dwell with God forever. I hope today that you are making preparation. Preparation today by looking at God's word and knowing what his word wants us to do in order for us to enjoy a place that he has prepared for us. Here at the Goodlessville Church of Christ, we want to do everything that we possibly can to make sure that people are prepared for heaven. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. If you have any questions, I pray that you'll ask us, that you will talk to us, and even if it's sending us a message here on Facebook in order for us to get in contact because we want to talk to you about being prepared for the place that God has prepared for us.